Council's work is a key factor in our efforts to bring America's leaders from industry, government, and other sectors together to identify and address the key challenges facing our supply chain infrastructure. Ms. Wynne Smith is a member of the Board of Directors of NASDAQ OMX Incorporated and serves on the Audit, Compensation, and Finance Committees. She's also a member of the Department of State's Advisory Committee on International Economic Policy, and she recently chaired the Secretary of Commerce's Advisory Committee on Strengthening America's Communities. She also participated in the Secretary of Energy's Task Force on the Future of Science and Nuclear Energy. I now ask you to join me in welcoming Ms. Deborah Wynne Smith. Thank you very much, Mary, and also on behalf of the Council, thank you and your team at Commerce for your tremendous leadership. We are absolutely delighted to be participating um, with Secretary Locke and Secretary LaHood and the International Trade Center on this very important uh, discussion today on the game-changing implications of logistics supply chain and how this impacts our competitiveness and prosperity. By 2020, 80 percent of all middle-class consumers will live outside the developed world. These again are our customers, our partners, our competitors, and where the demand-driven consumer-led economy will really be shaped. Another challenge is the emergence of the integrated global enterprise. We like to say at the Council, multinationals do not really exist. What we've seen emerging, and this is not just in the U.S., it's Brazilian companies, it's Japanese companies, European and now Chinese companies and Indians, are companies that are really determining that the global environment is their playing field and where they decide to put their high-end R&D, a lot of their logistics work, um, their talent development, it all depends on being near their customers but looking at the world in terms of where their value is created. This is very important because the nature of trade has fundamentally changed. Yes, today we're talking about how we can accelerate the movement and flow of goods physically, across borders, within borders, but the global enterprise increasingly develops its products, services, and customers through these value chains that, again, involve a lot of intangible assets and a lot of the enabling conditions of innovation. Just to give you a little idea on some fabulous data, but a little scary data, is that sales from the foreign affiliates of U.S. companies are more than three times greater than the entire value of U.S. exports of goods and services. This is, again, why moving out in the trading world, not being protectionist, is absolutely critical to our future as well as to the world. Another challenge and opportunity is for the first time in human history, we have a global trade in tasks and 24-7 global labor arbitrage. The effective global labor supply has quadrupled between 1980 and 2005, most after 1990. Many educated people are emerging into this global workforce. And as a famous author recently said, everyone in the world is competing everywhere, all the time, for everything. And it's easier every day to ship work around the world in bits and bytes. If work is routine, if, it can, if it's routine, rule-based, digitized, there's going to be a low-cost source of labor to do that work. And already China and India are feeling the impact of this 24-7 labor arbitrage. 